Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Many of you have been messaging and asking, what do I do, how do I store my bought produce? Well, to be fair, it's pretty much, it's pretty much straightforward. There's a lot of information online about sort of preserving and storing your, um, the things that you buy or you um, prepare or dehydrate yourself. I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs. I know there's many people out there trying to teach people how to do things and how to suck eggs but not actually able to get the eggs in their mouth properly anyway so I don't want to be one of this person I'm just telling you my way and what I do it's gonna be only a short video but um, basically to start with um, not everything needs to be vacuum sealed or put away uh, because not everything gets back so basically things that I don't really bother with doing anything with is a cooking salt and sugar none of those do need to be in a um, vacuum bag or Milo bag um, if you do want to vacuum it that's absolutely fine but obviously those things like the vacuum bags and Milo bag do cost money so if you feel like you can't be bothered and that's fine to be fair I've seen some people before you can just put it in like another bag a thicker bag and tape it up so it's a bit more sort of you can stack it up better and whatever else and that's fine so the same is with sugar you can sugar it's annoying thing about the sugar is because the uh, even in salt and um, sometimes the little bits the little sugar granules come out and might make a mess so if you do feel like you want to rebag it whatever vacuum seal it that's absolutely up to you but one thing that is 100% 100% needs to be probably protected is flour oh god I've learned the hard way guys prior to the pandemic and everything else I always have flour we eat a lot of pizza um, I bought big bags of flour and I had them in my cupboard um, unfortunately I left it probably for a little bit too long and I didn't really take a great care of closing the bag or um, decanting it into the smaller things so basically after a little while I started to have the bugs in my flour and one lesson learned guys like do not ever ever keep all of your grains and flour in one place because unfortunately I had big bags of flour I had my reserves of um, smaller things of flour but they weren't vacuum packed and unfortunately the whole lot got done by the bugs so if you like if you miss the initial infestation in the bag they'll eat through the plastic they go through they eat through the paper and they'll just basically they'll ruin your whole stock so one of my main tips is never ever stock all your grains or flowers in one place if this is the only thing that you guys have is like one cupboard I totally understand but do be very vigilant do clean it up properly because as I said it only takes one buck to get in there or hatch from your flower and it could ruin everything so be very very careful with that so so flour is number one that I vacuum seal um, long-term grains right so we've got the pearl barley we've got um, yellow split peas rices all of that will vacuum pack because Again, um, I never had issues with bugs in my rice or the peas or anything as with well the larger grains. However, again, I do not want to take the risk. So if you are buying something for a long term to put away for not your three months or six months in the cupboard, but you want to keep it for sort of put in the cupboard, forget about it until the next few years, then I strongly suggest that you do vacuum seal that. This is the example when the vacuum seal bag fails because unfortunately for some reason they never really fail proof so even if you are this is a difference this is rock hard and this is not it's not the end of the world but because it didn't work i'm not going to bother resealing this it's just going to live in my um so imminent cabin for imminent use one tip i do give you guys is to have some bay leaf i've put bay leaf in all my rice because apparently the bugs don't like the smell of it and if so happens hopefully well they don't get there but anyway it's an extra precaution that i take of putting a bay leaf in there so yes absolutely must again if you want to go even further you can use those little plastic food grade containers so you can seal your rice, seal your flour and you can pile them up in the in the basically tubs like that and then if you don't have a cupboard space you can stuck up the tub somewhere in a corner whatever you find the space but it's basically it's options there for every size of the property and whatever you choose to stock your bits and bobs so like again things like i picked up the other day is like a soup broth kit again i only bought a few of them to be fair i probably keep a couple just like they are in the cupboard again um these things have like couple of years date um, if you know you're going to use them very very soon I just won't bother I just keep them in the bag if I want to put them away I'll probably vacuum seal them the same goes with the beans and split lentils never touch wood never touch wood have had any issues with bugs living and things like that however again if I am putting this away for 
a year or two years, I will vacuum seal this and then put this in the minor bags. So again, example is, so guys, I have sweet corn. I have my instant, <laughs> instant, readily available sweet corn for popcorn in a normal Tupperware type thing. And then I have a uh, sweet corn that is vacuum sealed. And again, this is lives in my uh, three to six months cupboard. And then the stuff that goes further away goes in the vacuum seal in the Mylar bag with oxygen absorbers. They absolutely must. One thing I have to say, guys, I've seen the videos, people like, um, obviously preparing and doing their own vegetables and fruit, whatever, dehydrating stuff. You've got to be really careful and actually think about it because it's pointless to dehydrate in sweet corn. You buy sweet corn frozen or fresh, whatever you choose to do, and then you dehydrate that. It's cost you far more by the time you run your um, dehydrator. And it's just, to me, they're just daft. You can buy, I've bought 10 kilos of sweet corn and it's five pound a kilo, already dried, freeze dried. So I just bag it up and store it. So sometimes use your common sense and if you see something like certain bits are cheaper for you to do yourself to dehydrate yourself like i'm growing my own herbs so to me dehydrating this makes sense because yes herbs and spices are expensive but this is the produce it's free that grows in my garden so to me spending a couple of pounds on dehydrating a lot is not a big deal um the same is with the uh, bay leaf i've got the bay tree there so i always dehydrate mine to add on to my rices and anything else so here we are. So next thing as well, guys, with, <clears throat> excuse me, storing, like, if you do dehydrate stuff, like, anything that you do, um, dehydrating, I've got the dehydrating, old Andrew James dehydrating machine, it's only, like, 50 pounds, but it works really well, um, I don't feel the need to change it. When you do dehydrate something, um, you never really get 100% of the moisture out of the product unless you use freeze drying machines. I would love to have a freeze drying machine, but they're like three or four thousand pounds and they're pretty big. So anyway, so do bear in mind that you do not always get 100% of moisture out. So you have to take extra precautions. So you either have to vacuum seal this or if you're using the stuff in the jar, do use your um, oxygen absorbers. You can pick them up for, um, I think it's 15 quid, 400. I got myself another lot. Um, them in a jar if if the jar is there for the long term if it's not something you're using constantly in your kitchen chuck one or two of them in there and then put them in the cupboard at least you know that the there'll be no oxygen in there and it will stop oxidization process has um making your stuff last a bit longer like things with the salt when i have make my own salt i've made the spring um spring onion salt which is amazing thing i have the oxygen absorber buried in there because it has additive like a normal salt so it still has some content of moisture so i don't want it to spoil so in this instance i will use my absorber and like normal herbs to be fair i don't bother if it's something again there's a short term in my cupboard i just sit there there's no need to have oxygen absorber because you open in this tin like every couple of days or so anyway all right and again i've also said i've done some uh, croutons, again, is a really good thing to have um, on your little soups or those little soups that I showed you in the other video. Again, I would suggest the oxygen absorbers in there. So, right. Pastas, how do I keep pasta? The same thing, guys. With the big bags, you know, the big bags I bought from um, Asda, at the moment, they are just piled up <laughs> in the corner in the bags. Again, pasta don't seem to have, touch wood again, hopefully, doesn't seem to have an issue with bugs going in there because it's not they can't really sorry bury themselves in there so for again for imminent term for three to six months pasta is absolutely fine it's probably fine for a year without anything trying to get in there um if you're trying to stalk it for a longer term again i strongly suggest you put in the stuff in the mylar bags um and put it whatever you want to keep it under the bed or in the box this is what basically mylar bags look like i've got the black ones with the handles if i'm using the um vacuum sealer which i show you in a minute i have to cut the handles because that's not convenient but if you just want to store something that doesn't require vacuum seal or you put already vacuumed rice in there leave the handle because it's quite handy to put in there it's it's so many of them available so this one opens up so it's quite a thick one it's so many of them available online amazon you can even buy the packs with the oxygen absorber they're normally silver but i've got the black ones anyway and they are absolutely brilliant for long term it's you, you spend a bit of money. They're not like they're not particularly cheap, but I feel that if you're really prepping and you do want to just put it in there, then you do that. I have them vacuum sealed in the bag, in the Mylar bag with the oxygen absorber and it's vacuum sealed. So this is literally rock hard. This is rice in there. Um, there's I think what three kilos of rice in there. So I know I can put this like under the bed 
top of the wardrobe. I can put it anywhere and I know I can forget about it for like good five, whatever, ten years and it'll probably still be absolutely fine when I open it up. So there we are. And the main thing that you can't a prep us can do without, guys, is one of those um, one of those vacuum sealing machines. I had this one again for years, Silvercrest from Lidl. At the time, I think they were like 15 pounds. And you know, I don't know what I could have done without, to be fair. Um, they still do them. You can buy them online, though, a little bit more money now. Um, I keep going into when they Lidl have a kitchen week. I'm trying to find those refillable bags. They used to be... I think like three ninety nine for two rolls. Um, they come in two different sizes, and I cannot find them at the moment. They're not not on Lidl anyway. Um, you can buy them on Amazon. Um, they're fairly cheap. I think it's I've seen ten pounds for two rolls, and it's six meters each, which is, seems to be quite a good um, quite a good deal. But yes, this is something is absolute must if you want to store your stuff long term. So pretty much, guys, really this covers it all. So it's very simple for me. Imminent cupboard, I don't bother with stuff like that. I don't bother doing anything to it. If anything goes slightly longer term, then yes, I just vacuum seal that, put it away somewhere like in one of my store cupboards. And then if I'm really, really, really putting this away for like good five, 10 years, then I'm gonna vacuum seal this, put the absorber in and put this in a mana bag. So hopefully I've covered and answered your question really to what I do and how I do it. If you do have any other questions, please do let me know in the comments below and I hope you see you again very soon. Bye bye.